Good afternoon. Thank you, Aima, Chunajaji, and team, Nidhi, for inviting me here to make a presentation on the topic. So, half of my work is already over. Mr. Sandosh has done most of the work what AI can do. So, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Now, before uh, coming here, I had uh, asked the same question to many of my MSMEs. I wanted the data to how they are responding. I want to know what is the actual problem. I know the problem because I, I want to know from them also. So, what they gave is that there are four, you know, four areas where the, they, they are facing real problem. Identifying the correct product, marketing, supply chain, and finance. Okay. These are key areas where they feel that, especially the micro units are finding it difficult. So my focus here will be on, can you just move this? I will take you through, uh, take, I will tell you some stories. Are you interested to hear some stories? Yeah. Yes. Gamification is the way to teach now or to do things now. now I will try to say some stories. Then we will try to find out what are the, some challenges or barriers. And I will try to finish off with some suggestions. MSMEs are also there. So I am not an expert in technology. But I know there is something called as AI. You all know that there is some AA? Please respond. Yes, sir. Are you using AA? Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, can you tell me what you said you are doing it? Chat GPT. Anybody else? Are you being used by somebody? Yes. Uh, for AA? Yes. Yes. So you are not out of it. Either you are using it or you are not be, you being used it. You are being monetized for what you are being, what you are doing. Are you aware of that? Yes. So now technology is in such a state, you cannot escape from this. Really, I can say I don't want uh, WhatsApp. I don't want this. Now, even if you don't want, you are into it. That is how the technology is pulling us in, and we are also becoming part of it. So what I will try to do is that I will try to take you through some stories, actual stories of what has happened to some MSMEs. And I will tell you how it, they were able to resolve it. And I will also uh, take you through some of the main points which Mr. Sandosh has already detailed to you, but still I will try to push you through something and make an awareness of uh, where you can do what you can do on this as you grow, as you become mentors tomorrow, as you become managers tomorrow, or, or when you get into some kind of innovation, when you want to try to help some companies also on this, and some MSMEs also can, uh, it will be useful for them also, I think. So we'll go to the next slide, please. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. So let's start with some stories, okay? Start moving. Start moving. There is a company called Rajendra Grinders. Okay, it had three, ch three challenges. If they were on a scale-up stage. They were not able to grow because they had limited distributor network across multiple countries. They wanted to grow, go to other countries. They want to increase their network. So they were at a particular stage. And they had in insufficient service partners. Even if you go to some other country, when, if you have to sell your product, you should have service partners for that, isn't it? Nobody will buy something from India, who will there? You don't have any commitment, you are not sure about it. So unless you solve these things, you are not, that company was not in a position to move forward. So ultimately what they, uh, some, uh, some help was given to them, where data mining, data analytics, AA and deep learning was used. The tales are so big, don't worry about the technicality of it, but see how that those problems were solved. They did a global distributor and repair mine, repairs mining. 
you have you know gold uh, gold mining using ai and data they were able to mine in and you are also trying to find out the solve the problem of servicing that that will come to so they were able to do in the identify 30000 retailers imagine using data analytics and ai they were able to identify 30000 retailers 1200 distributors spanning 72 countries which was not all you can even imagine about this uh, you were maybe last year two years back which is which was possible they were able to do that and not only that with the data and a availability they were able to do kyc for each distributor and the retailers that's why everybody is tracked what for you is, is tracked your check returns are tracked your sales returns are tracked everything is getting tracked you are already in the cloud so they were able to identify those cases which are good and pass on to the uh, uh, the company. Okay. Now they were able to make video samples of the products. Service, as I told you, was a big issue. They were able to make video samples of these products and give it to the distributors and retailers, make them understand how to do servicing for this. Not only that, there was a facility addition given. If at all any service is being done at some point of time, it can be monitored from India also, whether they are doing it properly. So a real-time monitoring of the service that is being done. Is it fantastic? Do you appreciate this? Yes. So this is the strength of uh, data analytics, AI, and what they were able to do is that through this, they were able to overcome the distribution challenges, expand their market presence, and achieve sustainable growth by tapping new markets efficiently. What you want to know, you need not be an AI expert. You have to know the capability of AI and data analytics. AI is nothing but absorbing lots of information, taking some information, analyzing it, and what are the techniques that are being giving you an output, what are the way you require, okay? So basically understand that only. Let, let us not go deep into it. So I'll tell you one more story. Uh, this company, uh, which is Ram Machine Works, had a problem of lack of predictive orders, which we uh, discussed in the last case also. And here, they were facing Im immense competition. You see, everybody is talking about competition. Even the way you see competition is getting changed. Yesterday I was reading somewhere, the head of Netflix was telling for him what is the competition, what can be the competition for him, for Netflix, what can be the competition? What is that? Prime, Prime. Prime Video. Or anyone else? Hotstar. He was telling Prime and Hotstar is not my competitor. My competitor is the sleep. People are sleeping. I don't want people to sleep. See, see how people are seeing challenges. How are people seeing opportunities? Because I don't want people to sleep. So that that's my biggest competitor. So they, they are not making inroads. So they jokingly said, but see how things are changing. How the perception is changing. So any of competition is there. So these are the two things that uh, they were uh, 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 problems for them. No. Absence of effective warranty and insurance operations. You are selling from here. You are selling to Finland. You are selling to Dubai. You are selling to UK. How do you give warranties? How, how that company can depend on these warranties? What are the rules applicable in those countries? It's a big challenge. Okay. This was again solved. Leveraging AI, deep learning and data analytics. How it was done? I'll just tell you. Again, a in the, uh, as in the first case, here also there was a deep uh, mining of the distributors in South America, in uh, India, Sri Lanka, Africa, and all these things again that has happened here. Now, they start issue digital war warranty and escrow services. Now, when you issue a warranty, this because of the IT, because of the data, because of the information available, 
they they have the warranty procedures warranty techniques of more than 147 countries how it has to be issued and all those things so and they were able, they were able to issue it in a digital form digital warranties not in physical form digital warranties and most interestingly they were able to create something called as escrow services what is an escrow service okay you are giving a warranty an indian company is giving a warranty you are exporting something you are giving a warranty what is the condition that you will satisfy that warranty when casualty, some casualty happens? There should be some gap. The, what they have done is that, see the innovation, there is what, what you call as innovation. And this is why this innovation they are doing using these technologies. They were able to create an escrow account. Whenever a product is sold in US or in Finland, in relation with the sale, a portion of that money will be contributed by the manufacturer and a portion by the <coughs> distributor and they will create an escrow account. So it will be so connected that that escrow mechanism will use, it, it's so linked and uh, tokenized such a way that only something happens to this product that escrow, me that waterfall will happen from that uh, escrow mechanism. You got it? See, it's a, it's a complex thing which they have made so simple and made practically acceptable internationally. So they were able to give cryptocurrency or stable coins. Stable coins, no, against uh, uh, cryptocurrency only, which has some kind of standardization. So that, uh, be, uh, connecting it with some commodity or currency. Am I right on that? Maybe you since you're a technical person. So this is what has happened. So the, see how the easily the business was able to escalate using these simple technologies. At least you should know these things are possible. And this then NFT, non-fungible tokens are technology, immutable color, quality assurance certificates. So because of this uh, technology, because they know from where they, it has come, the product assurance is that this product is from Bangalore, from such and such and spare, spare person on a blockchain. It is, there's no doubt about the product. And that's a quality assurance also. Through this, the company was able to overcome hurdles, operations, and they were able to achieve operational efficiency, pay way, pay way for the sustainable growth in a dynamic market. Clear to you? Now I'm going to come to a case where students were able to solve a big problem. Where students were able to solve a big problem using AI and technology. That is, there was a plywood consortium. It was a plywood manufacturing units in somewhere in Kerala, in per Perimbau. So they had all the problems because they were all single units, lots of competitions, there, there were lots of issues. So their problems were improving the quality of the product, product differentiation, you should stand out, isn't it? Product cost reduction, because that was also another challenge. Another ch challenge was competition from big brands you have some big, big brands, okay? Then sales return due to pure, poor quality. Again, because you don't have the quality of the product, you get the return, okay? Now, productivity was another another issue. Wastage, because of the production, the wastage was there because you don't get the, <coughs> the way you process the plywood is not good, or the way you uh, preserve the plywood is not good, the processing is not good, the heat temperature maintained is not good. So they have lots of wastage. Because of naturally they all fell into what you call as financial difficulties. Okay, now they went with this problem to MSME Development Institute uh, to choose, which is the uh, for in each state there will be a center. They went to them. They were able to. They were not able to give their solution for that, but they connected this company to what you call as so technology enabling center of Amrita Vidya Vidyalaya. They there was a technology enabling center. This, this problem was thrown to the students on how, what you are going to do. This is a problem. So what they did, all these plywood companies, they joined together and formed a consortium. And what they did, they uh, uh, placed smart IoT devices due for process control and automation. When the process is happening, at each point, you will know what whether something wrong is happening, whether there's a quality defect, whether there's a pressure defect, whether there's a heat defect, everything you will know 
when the process is happening. Okay, and <coughs> or uh, many of the things were automated, like in, uh, this uh, when there is a whenever there is a temperature, pressure, flow rates, chemical composition, every at every point, these were the issues that were making those product uh, uh, problematic and not uh, good in the market. So this they solved through that. And connectivity, they, the simple thing, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Zigbee. Anybody know Zigbee? Zigbee is nothing but connecting lots of machines together. And you get the level, uh, you can get it on a uh, control board, what all things are happening. Okay. And they were able to smart dashboard. On the dashboard, you will uh, know everything. And AI will predict equipment failure, product quality failure, any kind of pre 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 preventive maintenance is required and other in sensor reading, historical data and so that was being done not by anybody but other than some students who were working in this uh, simple IoT devices. So with that, with this automation process, they increased productivity by 20 percentage. Another thing they sold was power outage, how to manage if power fluctuations, if a door power failure happens, how to predict it, if there's a failure happens, how to reschedule your uh, production process, that they were able to do that. Benefit, um, it, it empowered the industry, productivity enhancement and efficiency, making the com that company industry for ready. So this is how simple things are being applied in companies and where they, uh, where, where the companies, especially MSMEs, uh, micro units gets benefit. Now, I'll tell you about one story. There's a pen pole. MSME lack resources before they have to innovate. Good example is of MSME which uses process innovation well. So what we now say is that if you have to go for innovation, you need resources. Okay. So what is the resources that you require? So that company is here, which was lacking resources, so they wanted to do innovation. You got the cycle. So they, what they did is that they did a process innovation, and the company was in the crisis of a financial crisis. It was about to, about to close. At that time, they went for lots of process innovation, and especially sterilization, dyeing, and new packaging of blood bags. Now the company, this company, because of this process innovation which they did, is one of the Asia's uh, best and the highest manufacturing blood bank unit of from Asia. So this is an innovation which was for which they had to undertake because they had resources crunch. Okay. Now this happened at a time when there was not much of AI. We are not talking about uh, data analytics. You think of a situation today, if it was done today, what will be the situation? Now, you can optimize those things which you are already doing because we have seen from the last, the earlier cases, how can you, how you can optimize the cotton manufacturing process, product design and all. Okay, now, involve streamlining workflows, automating tasks or introducing new technologies becomes easy now. And uh, the, here they analyze the workflows. You are not analyzing the work workflows. The AI or the data, uh, <coughs> my data analytics, which does the work for you, is is of handling repetitive tasks, monitoring uh, equipment failure in time, predict maintenance. So that uh, this uh, Mr. Santosh has already detailed. But I'm telling you a practical example where it has happened. Prototyping. Now you can create 3D models. Any kind of models you can design, you can plan which model is required. It's possible. Now there are there are <coughs> there are uh, <coughs> predictive uh, there are uh, tools which can even tell what is the taste taste of the customer individual based on each individual. What is his taste? And you and how do uh, you additional value to this product? All A can do. Okay. Another is that uh, what uh, Mr. Sandosh has discussed A powered vision system. Uh, you have vision systems uh, placed at different places, which through uh, AA you can identify whether some problem is going to happen for that, 
whether there is any manufacturing issues are going to happen for that. So, <coughs> defects and deviations from the quality standards are identified real time. A can optimize energy consumption also, that we already discussed energy. So, all these things are not possible with the AI, which he was not able to do for 30 or 25 years back. Now, with this AI, all these things are possible. Now, as far as marketing is concerned, we already discussed, we have the availability of resources, financial resources, the major crunch for uh, MSMEs, access to market demand, gener gener generation, generating and scaling up is a big issue. Branding differentiation is a major issue for especially small units. Fast changing consumer preferences, it's so fast changing. Nobody is saying, uh, customer is not aware of that, but you are continu continuously giving him new things and making ch change his preferences. Competition, especially from large corporates. Customer relationship management, what we already discussed. So these are some of the areas, key areas, uh, where A can play very, very important role. At least know that these are areas where I am not going to detail because since he has already detailed, I will skip those area portions. These, uh, at least understand these, these are not that you should be a technology person, at least you should be aware that these are the key areas which can scale up your business to any particular level. This is the tool that you will require at the time of your scale up. Product innovation, technology, and customer focus from, from the core of known leather footwear. Now more focus has to be innovation in marketing. That's what he has already detailed. Lots of innovation has, uh, should happen in marketing. There are various tools of AI available for that. So this is marketing we have already discussed. Marketing spend, how, to, how you are to use the spend, how to monetize that spend. Now, this I took yesterday from my LinkedIn. <coughs> this is very simple. See, these are some paid tools. These are some free tools which are available. At least try to learn these things. Because I, for my uh, organization, now I don't use, I don't give it to any uh, company for any design change or, uh, or any, or any, uh, any uh, new year wishes or anything, nothing. I just sit in front of that, I open, uh, uh, <coughs> what is, uh, I, I just open uh, Firefly uh, and just ask, give me this kind of new year greetings, done. It all depends upon how you give it. And if you are not happy, you can make some changes in the world so you get that. So these are things which is possible. You can, ideation is possible, chat GPT paid as well as uh, there are free products which is available. See, try to use that. I have been using this, I have been uh, experimenting with that also. To give you a small example, I had to find out the answer for a particular problem which I got the answer, but I want to get the uh, narration how it is I, how it is derived. So I gave it to one uh, a tool which gave me an answer but it, the answer was slightly different i gave it to another a tool that gave me the answer which is correct why i know that is correct is that i know that the, that's the answer which is given i wanted a uh, dv i wanted to derive how it is arrived so then i asked this particular uh, a tool that the answer what you have given is wrong i think the answer is this after some time it gave me an answer thank you for up pointing out the mistake, I am in the, still in the learning stage. Don't think that AI is full. I am still in the learning stage. So when I looked into it, I could realize that there was some problem, uh, the, the command I given, there was some mistake in the command I given. So you should know what command, how to give it. You should start trying all these things. Even Amazon should dare to try all these things. Okay? Okay, thank you. So I'll just uh, so you, you, those who want, you can go through it. Now product uh, products development. I'm not going to deep into it. I can share my PPT. Have you heard of Oral B Genius? Anyone heard of Oral B Genius? You use it. <laughs> I have not seen a user so far. I've heard about it only. Anyone else? You are using it. Good. Well, how is it? So as 
you brush your teeth, it <laughs> realizes how you are using it, and if it is no, it is not proper, it will start telling you that you are not using it properly. You have to brush it like this. So this is the way product development is happening where A is playing. So how can you surprise your customers with such innovations? The only thing is that you should know these are the type of things available in the market. Right? So I am not going deep into all these things. So I wanted to, there are so many tools which are available, DALI. Adobe Firefly Crystal knows that there's a good Soho CRM uh, tool which is available. MSM is please note that which you can use. Supply chain management is another, another key area where lots of things can be done. Chat GPT already we discussed. There's another mid journey, is another you can make a photo realistic. Uh, you try, it is available. Three or four photos. At least three or four you can take without any making any payment. If you want to, uh, if you make a small payment, then you can start designing your products. You can specify this type of product I require. Okay. So these are uh, some of the stories, and these are the some of the uses that I have to present before you, and to make you aware that such possibilities are aware, aware are available. Don't worry about resources because unless you innovate and you give such surprises to your customers you are not going to be there in the market. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ajayanji. It was a very wonderful presentation and it was very practical. You were able to really give the insights into the MSMEs, how they can be more penetrative and useful, use their AI technologies to be more precisely getting the best uh, out of it uh, with the new technologies available in AI. And also, before that, uh, Santosh Ji, Santosh Kumar had given a lot of uh, uh, ideas and uh, new concepts uh, which were uh, very, very useful for AI and uh, like uh, CRM, B2B on inventory management, on supply chain management, financial management, especially on the fraud detection, etc. And also, marketing and uh, uh, ad optimization and uh, predictive uh, maintenance and uh, we gave the examples of Amazon and the companies uh, where uh, they are using the new techniques for uh, new technologies, AI technologies for uh, the product uh, uh, prioritization and uh, first in first out kind of an activity etc. So now uh, with the uh, presentation from the AGM, AGM -G on giving the importance of how uh, the, the examples, practical examples of uh, Rajendra grinders and also especially the uh, plywood consortium and the other, uh, uh, this one, how beneficial it is to the small uh, entrepreneurs and also how AI has become a more effective tool in uh, utilizing these uh, technologies and uh, to running the business smoothly and effectively, efficiently and get the Best out of uh, the AI technologies is uh, what is uh, being uh, given by both the speakers, and it was very effective and uh, wonderful presentation. So now, I, if you have any questions, I request uh, the audience to, uh, to put your questions to both the speakers. We, I think, we have a few more minutes uh, uh, to conclude the session. If uh, I hope, uh, if you have any questions, you please. Uh, uh, start with your questions to both the speakers. Thanks for your opportunity. And basically, while Mr. Santosh was explaining, you are really explaining us how we can use the AI tools. Uh, for that, if we can able to suggest the, the tool names, like as the uh, while presentation of the presentation, in a few slides he was mentioned like uh, uh, different type of tools, the free tools as well the paid tools. Really, it will be very helpful for us to explore the, explore those tools actually. So, same way, if we can also suggest some tools, if possible, you know, it will be really helpful for us. Too.
I'm sorry, I'll take it as a feedback and I'll, I'll add it to my slide and share it with the uh, IMA team so they yeah. can have it uh, sent out to you all. Thank, thank you. The senior, like Mr. Ajin sir, really thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, we are able to, uh, I mean, note down the tools, but I am not able to take the photographs fully. Oh, I so if you can also share it, it will be really helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do we have more questions? Yes. So, good afternoon. Ajayan and uh, Santosh, uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, I'm talking to Ajayan particularly on the uh, Pen Paul story. I would like to know what was the critical thing that from an industry which was almost going bankrupt to become the largest manufacturer in Asia of the blood bank. Basically, they went on uh, lots of uh, product uh, uh, innovations and process changes. Basically, that uh, particular factory in Kerala, there was never a strike. You would, there was never a strike. There were lots of issues. Right? And they, to get to the market also, go to the market also was a challenging because it was a reserve product of uh, uh, one of the leading uh, medical institutions in Kerala. Sri Chitra did not institute. So from there only, he was an IAS officer, he took it. He was not a businessman, he started it. And the turning point, he says, is that the moment he started process innovation and product innovation, things started changing. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this opportunity to uh, ask the question. The question is for Mr. Santos and Ajahn. Uh, we were discussing about the positives about AI, how we can use it to you know, cut down our mundane work. But uh, what your opinion on, is it not cutting down the creativity in the people? If you are implementing AI at the level of PPT or at the level of creating pictures, is it not hurting creativity at a longer run? So that's my question, if you can give some insight on that. Uh, th thanks so much for the question. Uh, so, so before I jump in there, uh, one thing I forgot to mention and I think we missed as a whole in terms of conversation is the ethics part of the AI is also very important. As we talk about that uh, AI, uh, even at my org, we have a very strong ethics committee before which uh, we don't even push out any AI tools. So ethics is one thing that uh, any AI builder is today looking at as well to ensure that the databases aren't getting carried forward. Because you mentioned positive, then I realized the negative side of the AI as well, right? Uh, now to come to your question about will it kill my creativity, I'll probably give you an analogy of uh, uh, whether, uh, when you think of the painters, right? Uh, when MS Paint came into the world, this question must have been already asked. Uh, did it kill the MFSA? No, right? So what uh, creativity uh, requires is to get away from all the mundane work and to use your uh, creative juices to deploy that knowledge and that ability and the time and effort to focus on higher value of the activity, right? So in my view, creativity won't get killed. Rather, you'll have much higher abstraction creativity that comes into play instead of just copy pasting. Like if you look at the army of uh, uh, MBAs that sit into the presentations, Right? Uh, after studying for two years in IM, that's what I did as well. So we, we waste a lot of time in doing these mundane work. Now I can actually use that creativity and knowledge to build the business in a better way than doing these PPT because this for me it took about 11 minutes to get the whole uh, 12 page PPT done. So I can actually spend more time on researching what are the AI tools, how do I deploy that, how do I use that. That is where I probably want to spend more of my time and really enhance the learning for all the audience. And that's why I use my time. I'm sure every creative person can also use their creativity to a different level uh, and that will probably make our experiences also much better right, as a consumer. That, that's my view and Mr. Ajay, you can. That's a good question and see, uh, what all you tell us the technology, there's nothing beyond what is there in the human body. See, you, what all new inventions you are coming up with are already there. We are yet to know ourselves. That's what I believe. I was a, a, a professor, somebody was telling, talking to a professor. If you use this watch, it will tell you uh, whether you are getting uh, auto mode, whether you are getting depressed. 
and everybody was telling hi, and this professor was telling, you want me to, this watch to tell me whether I am getting uh, depressed or auto mood. I, as a human being, I have, I should retain the capability of whether I, I know this. It's not that whether you want to become slave to this, because this, I'm not, but the, what I'm saying is many re repetitive things which you are doing, and many things that some thought process can come into, you can take on to that. So as I said, as A itself has said, I am still in the learning process. He is learning from us only, but we are correcting them. So it's a long way to go. But I am sure that employment is not going to be an issue because at least lots of openings will come this way or other. And uh, this creativity, I, I, I don't know. Still, uh, some when I see some images, I still believe that I can do something better than that. Maybe I used to feel that I'm not uh, able to prompt it from, uh, properly because I'm not, not a technology person. Maybe that is that's a that is the uh, satisfaction I take out of that. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'd like to call. Doctor, we still have questions. Good afternoon, sir. What if AI goes on improving? What about human employment? I think he just addressed that. So, I'll probably give you a closing note on that. The the employment uh, generation is going to continue to happen. It's just that skill set that you have today will have to be redeployed, right? So you will have to, you know, each of us have to also upgrade with the times. So imagine 20 years back, uh, government officials were troubled by the computerization in the departments, right? So it's the same case, right, for all of us today that we are also going further and improving ourselves. So employment cut down won't happen. In my view, employment generation is going to continue to happen. It's just my skill set, my ability, my competency have to also keep improving. That's why the upskilling will be required. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And uh, due to the time constraints, we will end the Q&A session here. And to the benefit of audience, I'd like to say that the dignitaries on the dais who conducted the session will be available for any queries outside during the networking tea break that we'll head to after the final session. So on that note, I am expressing heartfelt gratitude on behalf of Aima and Cassia for bringing to us a very educational all. Uh, first of all, thank you to Aima for having me here. So what we have uh, just had a chat and discussed is that I'll do a quick short presentation on why MSMEs should consider digital marketing and then we will get into a, a discussion mode, a, a panel discussion. So some of these slides are not even going to say anything, they are very obvious. So, uh, you know, so today marketing is more about relationships. And uh, one McKinsey report said the small industries, while they are adopting digital payments very well, they are not having web presence or not doing the, not as active in the digital marketing space. Right? So it's very interesting that while they want to accept the monies digitally, uh, they are not actually promoting the products digital. Just one example, WhatsApp uh, with out of 6.33 crore enterprises, we have hardly 23% of MSMEs are using uh, WhatsApp. Okay, it's a very small uh, number, adoption should be much better. 
and I try to look up the internet, look for what is the impact of digital marketing on small scale industries and across the world. I mean, if you see the internet, the Google Scholar and things like that, you will find hundreds of studies have taken place and all of them say that digital marketing have helped small industries in many ways, including or most importantly improving their profitability. Okay, so there's one Hyderabad study and there's one study in Kenya, IIT Delhi did one study with 320, uh, 10 uh, SME entrepreneurs. So all of them show a positive linkage. We'll quit this, uh, how to use it. So why should they use, I have just put 10 points, I'll show you quickly 10 slides. You have a much wider reach with uh, digital marketing. Even in the B2B sector, you know, we are talking about 200 billion as the uh, market space for e-commerce, B2B e-commerce. Second is, it's also proven that compared to traditional methods of marketing, digital marketing is cheaper, more effective. Actually, one Indian firm, they did some research and they found that it costs 62% less than traditional marketing with much higher returns. You can target your advertising better, uh, very sharp targeting. In fact, I spent some time in marketing communications many years ago and the only discussion between advertising agency and the client used to be about wastage. I released an ad in the newspaper, my target audience is only 5% of that readership but I am paying for the 100% of the readership. Today it's not like that, very sharply you can target, measurable results. You are able to change, you are able to measure results quickly. You have got increased visibility. You can build competitive advantage based on your digital presence. There is a study by Deloitte which talks about 2x revenue growth and 2.5x higher job creation among the digitally active SMEs. Okay, this is all uh, based on studies. Then you have global access to markets. Right? The numbers are very huge. If you look at the number of people who have uh, adopted or who are online at any given time, okay. half the world is already online. Half the world. Okay, and uh, B2B e-commerce market value at 20.4 trillion. Okay. So very huge market and the engagement and interaction. Very flexible. In fact, I know of marketing campaigns, digital marketing campaigns, which get changed on the fly. Within minutes, they change. Right? And also, it helps with the long-term uh, sustainability of the business. This is again uh, McKinsey's uh, study which proves that, especially they did this, I think, during or soon after COVID, that those uh, firms that were having this digital marketing capabilities, they were able to wade through uncertainties much better than those that were not uh, having this capability. Right? So, those were just 10 uh, things. I'll stop it there. Uh, I had a longer presentation. I think we will shift to the other format just now to start talking about what can MSMEs do as far as digital marketing is concerned. We talked about why should they get into it. I, I think most of us already know it, but I just thought it is a good idea to emphasize that part. Now we can talk about uh, how should they go about it. <coughs> Can we start with uh, Mr. Mahesh, maybe you can tell us. Uh, I think we need uh, hand marks. So, uh, you know, how should uh, MSMEs actually uh, start the process of getting into the digital market?
every one of MSME is doing marketing. But what is marketing is a basic question. You want your you want to Yeah, hello. I'm sorry. Let me begin with asking a simple question. All MSME do marketing. Now, marketing means what? That means you want your produce or the service to be known to others. Right? So how do you do that? If suppose if I go back 20 or 30 years back, all that we're doing is printing the brochure, literature about the product, then collecting where to send it and then send it. It used to cost hell of a money. Or you call up the guys. So this was the process which we were having earlier. And even today, when you look at it, final process is that, but before that process, the cost have been reduced to the significantly low amount. We want our product to be known. There's a way to get it known, discovered. Like if you put it on the e-commerce site, it get discovered. If you put it on your Facebook or any of the social media site, it gets discovered. If you create a YouTube or interesting this one content, it gets discovered. That means the discovery portion is not the basic problem. Or at best what you do, Amitabh Bachchan to talk about it. That means affiliate marketing. So somebody, Amitabh Bachchan's fans will start looking at the product. So this is the way it has been going all throughout. And the method has become very simple. That is the digital marketing. So digital marketing has nine components. How do you yourself get known? That means your website or your uh, digital media, how do you get discovered? So that's one, that is a search engine optimization. Then you have marketing. Can you use that thing for the marketing? When somebody comes on the site, does he see something about your product better? So it's there. Likewise, I leave it for the uh, time being, there are nine such things will happen, which are there in the essential part of the marketing, which are easy to master. And there is there's a cost of doing that is very, very small. And you could reach out to the global scenario as well. But the globally, you have to only worry about the language, the culture. So you again make your discovery done there. Subsequent to the discovery, there's a second portion is connecting with the person. So that would be your email marketing or your uh, physical marketing and then closing the deal. So I think the basically the, to answer the question that has been asked, how does MSME prepare for it? So this is the means to prepare is to learn about the digital marketing. In India, it's a very bad scenario. Currently only 20, how many? I think some. 71% of the MSME don't, are not even internet aware. That means in other countries, it is only 22%. That means in China, if you go, it's only 22%. In our country, it's 71%. So I'm sure that the journey for the MSME is a long, but we can start with the digital marketing, let the product be known either by e-commerce or by the website. So maybe uh, Namish can just uh, add to what other uh, tools that probably he has not mentioned. And uh, I'm also interested, actually, maybe the audience also will be interested about uh, what specific, you know, things that uh, SMEs, uh, what are tools that are more uh, relevant for smaller companies, you know, because they might not be able to spend large amounts of uh, money on uh, say online advertising or something like that. Sure. So I'll give you a perspective. I, uh, for all of you who don't know about me, in terms of what do I do, uh, I'm a director at a digital marketing agency, which ideally uh, brands, big brands, and customers come to us to help them in terms of building their digital strategy. Uh, can I stand? I think it's easier. Uh -huh. sure. Yeah, sure. I think it's a little easier for me to talk in there. So uh, what ideally I do is in terms of uh, digital marketing, helping them with the strategy, helping with the creators, helping them with social media, 
running ads, uh, then doing your SEO. Uh, I understand the entire context of here actually is to deal with MSME. Uh, you know, let's say to start with zero budget, zero rupee budget. Okay, and uh, I have quick tips for all of you uh, how you guys could uh, start to take your uh, digital journey at the base most level. And even if you have don't have money to spend on it idly, uh, how do you go about it? Idly, uh, I consult Mercedes. Uh, I've done it to Daimler Trucks. I've done it to SAP Labs India. Uh, I have done it to visit so, so they have a bigger budget to ideally to spend over. But then it always came as a question for me that how do you do without a budget? So ideally the first thing which you begin with, you know, when we say digital marketing hygiene is website. Now I'll, most of the people when you go out, people would be asking you that that how much you need to spend or where you need to spend ideally. So uh, do you guys have notes? So you guys can take a note so it's easy for you to remember actually after it. Whoever wants to take a notebook, you guys can take a notebook, I'll just tell you. Uh, a lot of you might also know about this platform which I'm going to tell, the tools. So uh, just in case even if you don't know, uh, if you know, good. If you don't know, it's just take a note for now. The first tool is called WIX Wix. So if you go over Wix, it allows you to create an entire website by yourself. And it is super easy. You don't need any set of coding. You don't need any set of uh, designer to design for you because you have ready templates ready. The templates are already there. The only thing which you need to know about is you need to have a couple of, uh, you know, at least per se, 10 to 15 images or photos of your business or business related topics and products, number one. Number two, you need to have a little bit of content and the content also, if you don't know how to write, as sir suggested, you actually can go to chat GPT, you can write thesis of pages of text actually. In fact, at my own agency, I have content writers I have advised them to use chat GPT every day. The only difference, I think someone you know, was asking here, will my job go away and things like that. So, uh, you know, a lot of the actually students are there. How many of you have watched Pokemon? You watch Pokemon? Yes. You've seen Pokemon apparently evolves. The thing is that there's smaller Pokemon, the bigger Pokemon. In fact, the digital marketing, though I'm, you know, advocating digital marketing here, but I had a session just a week before and a week, actually next week I have, and I'm talking only about what is, you know, how is AI marketing going to happen because what has happened is 2000 was a time where digital marketing was booming. Uh, digital marketing apparently is the base on which where you go, AI, you know, get into AI marketing. Uh, AI tools can really help you to, to optimize or to orchestrate your marketing, digital marketing process really, really easy and really simple. So for example, if you need images, you don't want to go to a digital agency like mine and still create images. Go to Skype, okay, you can give a prompt there, it will create the exact image because in fact a lot of my own designers are using that because the thing is that when you go to portals as well, you know, there are, you can't use random images from internet. You actually need to source images from only from copyright places, copy free, sorry, you know, where you don't, you not be charged for copyright, you know, by other people who actually have minted images. By using Skype or by using, you know, uh, Canva is there, there are other tools actually as well are there. Getting this image, you can get the images from there. Right? Content you can get from chat GPT. Third, Wix is there. On Wix is a platform you need to, you know, you'll be there. The only cost spent which you need to do is buy your domain. Domain is not free. Domain you guys need to go and buy from GoDaddy or other platform provider. You get that. The rest all has been taken care. So you guys can go home today and try on Wix. Trust me, it's going to be uh, no digital marketing agency director will tell you that. But I, as you know, we're talking about MSCB. I, I think, you know, I should, we should be talking about that. So first is your your website is done. Cool. The second thing is in terms of listing your Google. You know, you're listing your Google on Google Maps. The thing is that a simple request to Google Maps India, right? Or for example, to Google Business, the moment you send a request that I want my business to be shown up there, it'll uh, you just need to send a request to them. They'll send a you know small letter to you. You just need to send your image of your business and you get listed there. This part number two is over, which is actually of listing on Google. Google Maps, on Google Maps or Google Business. Two things are done. Activity number three, which is actually, what is more popular? Okay, the moment you go out of this session, what is, when you open your phone, where, where do you go and check it out your, all your social handles? Instagram? It is simple behavior, just, just, you don't need any, you know, complicated strategy to understand what should be the most best digital marketing strategy for me would be. The ideal simple thing is that, whatever you guys are actually using it, if your business is for your same age group, Trust me, that's the same platform is going to work for you. So if you think Instagram is something you open up, 
take up Instagram, open actually a business account, make your own business uh, handle ideally, okay? So for example, if you have uh, AIMA, okay? The thing is that AIMA, uh, make an Instagram page, make a LinkedIn page, those are good enough in terms of help you trend. That's it. You get your images, you can get the image created from where? What did I tell you before? Where you can get the image done from? Yes, yes you can get done from Skype. The content you can get done from? Chat GPT. Problem solved? So you are, so actually for your social media, the problem is solved, website problem is solved, Google map is done, right? Which is the fourth one? There's something called search engine optimization, which I think everyone also spoke about. Who and all know what search engine optimization is? What is search engine Yeah, go ahead. What do you think search engine optimization is? Can you pass a mic? Can you pass the mic, please? It's working. So it is understanding your customers better by the what they are searching on the Google or Almost right, but that's called understanding of your customer behavior. What you are referring to. What is search engine optimization is purely is, is, that's okay, that's it. The, the simple thing is that, uh, they say you can actually hide a dead body on a second page of Google. Okay? And second scenario, what they talk about is, to all the married men out there, you might lie to your wife, but you can never lie to Google. Right? You would never lie to Google, actually, because what you're writing there is actually being learned there. So what happens is, if you're looking for a relevant product, and uh, you wanted to appear actually and in fact I I was myself was intern at Google my first internship was actually at Google okay so I understand how Google really algorithm really works but that was 2013 uh, how it works is the thing is that if you get your result in top three not even the first page the top three if it doesn't appear there it's gonna create a lot of trouble for you right in terms of when I say trouble uh, it would lead to business loss the thing is that if the most potential people are not able to see you they would not be able to look into, go check your audience out, check, you know, check your product out, it will not result to a business, simple as that, right? So simple thing what you can do for SEO is, uh, so we have something called as off-page SEO and on-page SEO. You guys can write down just in case if you want. So uh, off-page, when you say on-page, the name itself says on-page SEO means on the website when you're doing optimization. It's called on-page optimization. So for example, keep updating your content, number one. Keep updating your images, okay? Google, I have something called as Google Bot. You can write it down if you guys want. Google Bot, which keeps scrolling through your website. Thing is that anytime you make a change, so uh, once in a while, Google, you know, Google, it's like a spider. The, the another name actually for it actually is Google Spider. It quickly comes in nanoseconds, would check your entire website and tell that, is this website relevant for the audience or no? All right, so if that you want it to be done, the thing is that it keeps indexing your page. Indexing means it keeps understanding, it keeps recording your page, yeah? Now, for it to index or for your Google crawl to keep, you know, crawling into your website again and again, what you need to do is keep changing your content. Content idea, you know already how it works. Images, you know, the only thing is, changing is something which you guys need to do. Nobody else would come and do. There's no automation for that as of now. Uh, maybe three years down the road, even you will find that as well, actually. Huh? Sure. And the last one is uh, running ads, which you guys could, you know about Google ads and Facebook ads. Uh, you can make account in Meta and you can make account in Google and run the ads there. It's a basic uh, toolkit to begin your uh, digital journey for almost free. Yeah? Cool guys. Yeah, great. Well, that is very interesting. Yeah, the context, uh, what would, I mean, you can add to what, we come back to the same old question. What would you suggest for a small scale industry or a small, uh, organization. Uh, good evening all of you. Uh, thank you Aima and Kasia for uh, having me here. Uh, it's actually an opportunity to speak uh, how MSME could go global with you using digital media. And I'm sure uh, my previous speakers have already given you all the insights. I'll just throw some note on it and you'll probably understand how badly it's needed because uh, uh, since morning I've been listening to uh, various speakers. They said uh, almost like a uh, uh, MSME uh, contributes to 30% of our GDP. 45% uh, of our exports are through MSME sector. And right now we hear from the gentleman over here, he said 71% of MSME do not use digital marketing. So you can imagine 
uh, what could be the scope in case you want to use digital marketing to go up and uh, get your space in digital world or uh, in the global world today? And that's the amount of uh, uh, scope MSME has to make sure that they do uh, business globally. And I'm telling you that based on uh, the experience that I had since morning and uh, reading it out because uh, there is something like you cannot avoid being going digital. So today you cannot afford, if, if, I'm, if I have to ask the audience sitting over here, uh, is there anybody who doesn't have a Facebook or an Instagram account here? Anybody who doesn't have it? Okay, very good. One, two, maybe three. Out of say 100 people, we have three people who don't have. We have 97% people who are on social media. And study says uh, in India almost one hour is what people spend on going through reels and uh, various other social media accounts. So if your target, if your audience is on digital platform today, what are you doing in any other medium? So, how many of us read newspapers here? How many of you uh, go through Reels today? Or Instagram or to any of the social media? Almost all of you, isn't it? So that is where the answer lies. So MSMEs who are sitting over here who think digital is not your piece of cake, you are wrong, you need to be there. And uh, my previous speakers have already spoken about how you need to go without spending a single rupees on it. So there is no way out that you need not be there. You have to make sure that you have your digital presence. You should have your website. You should have your social media presence. You should have your optimization of uh, uh, your websites and everything. Because today if we want to buy a shirt, I can go to a Louis Philippe showroom and buy. But before going to Louis Philippe showroom, I definitely check what is available on the internet. And especially with consumer durable products, so tomorrow I want to buy a mobile phone. I will check how much is it available online. Even if I am standing, if I went to Metro, which is a wholesale uh, organized sector market, and I, I was checking out on a television set. He said, sir, you check on Google, whatever is the price there, we will match it to that, to that and give it to you. That's what today world is all about. So there is no way out you can uh, miss out on digital marketing front when you want to do business in this uh, era today. Great, I think uh, two very important points. One is that you, know, uh, you just need to be uh, digital because your customers are there. And the second is uh, what was more interesting was the global opportunity for small businesses. You know, we uh, generally maybe looking at only Bangalore market or only India market, whereas the opportunity for every small industry is to go global. In fact, only this morning I was reading that the government of India also is bringing up a new portal aimed at uh, global e-commerce. That is, you know, all the licenses you need, all the approvals you need, and whatever you need for global e-commerce, will be provided by Government of India in one portal. So that's what uh, uh, they have just announced actually. So that's a great uh, uh, input, sir. Uh, Mayesh, anything, I mean, I think maybe he is not complete given the entire list of nine. So, you know, you can try to add. Sure. Some of the things which we should uh, definitely adopt, and all of you know, if you are making a product for B2C or B2B, you should have a different strategy. Suppose as, a, as an MSME, if you are trying to send a product to another company, so a strategy for digital marketing should be different. And if you are making a product which you are selling to the consumer, then your strategy should be different. So what's the kind of money people are spending generally in a company? So typically, if you are in the B2B space, you spend about 2 to 5% of your money on to the distant market, marketing itself. And in the distant marketing, is about 40%. So you are spending almost 1 to uh, 3, 4% on the distant marketing. And that is what is the standard which is there. In America, it's slightly higher. 
Asia and other countries is the number what you get. If you are doing the B2C marketing, you should be spending around 5 to 10 percent of your money. Because consumer requires larger attention, you want to reach more people, and the focus is quite different from the this one. So this is very important to know what money you have to spend. It's not a sizable money compared to if you do a different marketing, personalized marketing or newspaper ad or TV ad, it's, it, the budget will go to somewhere around 10 to 20 percent. So that's a kind of difference which is there. You are saving almost one-fifth. You are doing the work in the one-fifth of your money in the business marketing. And your reach is not limited to India. Your reach is across the globe because internet is across the globe. So this is the second advantage you get. All that you have to do when you say you can create a uh, website for free, perhaps you need to think of making the multilingual also, which is also available free. So multilingual and slightly sensitive to the people. Yeah, for example, if you want to sell in Orissa a B2C product, you must advertise in or content should be in Orian language. Otherwise, you are missing perhaps the very large segment of the people. So this is a small change that you have to do for your global sales. Global doesn't mean that outside India also. Global means India itself is having multi uh, languages so you, and the multicultural uh, way of doing the things. So you must try to take care of these two things in the, this one. And in India, you have very simple thing. ONDC is there. Oh, and how many of you have heard about ONDC? Yeah, today morning we had a talk. Okay, so I'm sure that ONDC you can get your yourself registered. You don't lose much, and you become a network partner. You can sell your products, Amazon, Flipkart. So this is the cheapest way of at least being discovered. Okay, I, I will give it to my colleague to tell you some more things and how you can reach to the other sites. Please. Yeah, one. Uh, thing that, you know, yeah. So what I wanted to just say is, uh, while you mentioned that it is much cheaper to go digital, still our MSME friends have not adopted it. So my guess, and uh, also some research is saying, that the reason for that is there is a lack of skills or, you know, they are not uh, comfortable to become digital. So this is something that is a something that is in the mind. One has to break that barrier, and then uh, once you start uh, small, then you can uh, kind of get into it. So I think many of the people here who are training uh, MSMEs and those people should get into uh, you know making it easier for them or bring those skills uh, to the small industries. Now what I wanted to ask Nami is to continue with whatever you were saying earlier. You said, you know, about the free website, you said the uh, Google address. Just continuing on that, I'm still in the free space. Sure. Uh, can you probably talk a little bit about uh, uh, earned media? For the paid media? No, yeah. earned. 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 Yeah. Okay, the earning from the earning from yeah. the... No, uh, earned media is uh, like, you know, comments that you get. Like uh, okay, 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 all right, sure. The, your unpaid organic, for. So engagement, engagement. Yeah, sure. organic. Un yeah, okay. Yeah. Unpaid, unpaid. So or organic, or, yeah, yeah. organic, mark. Okay, so what I'm more familiar with is actually the word called organic, uh, you know, paid or organic, that's what you say. So, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, in terms of your uh, organic, uh, what, what aspect would you like, would you like me to cover? No, no, how can small industries, what are those things that they can benefit from? For example, what I heard is, of course, you have a website, you even have a blog, for example. Then somebody comes and writes a good review. You just mentioned Google Ad. Yeah, correct. So in Google Ad also, we can get our customers to give us a five-star rating. Correct. So I, it doesn't cost me anything. Sure. Right. But I'm getting... All right. Got it. Okay. I'll just pick up on that. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that. I'll also just uh, finish off one of the question which you know he was covering in terms of you know reaching global via digital marketing via paid as well. So you know, he was talking about different strategy for B2B and B2C. I just have a point, so I'll, I'll come to this. The one simple thing is that if you are a B2C company and you want to reach uh, you know, a different countries specifically, 
and you don't want to spend all the journey to you know on your digital marketing and all the efforts the simple thing is run ads and you can run very geo targeted ads which can help you get your customer from whichever country you want and that could be your audience specific so that was just a quick tip in terms of your uh, b2c if you actually as a company and if you are a b2b company ideally what would you do in that case in the case of b2b you actually majorly focus in terms of you know how your uh, the same ads could actually could be could be bought about but also along with that if you could focus in terms of running your ads uh, targeting specific customer again the thing is that the segmenting is more important for you if you could segment those uh, you know your customer and then run it by uh, B, b2b also can be achieved in a similar fashion layout okay so coming to your uh, you know also some we call actually as organic uh, yeah, you know, again no that's okay we all have different terms which we use so in terms of your organic what you can do for example begin with uh, your google reviews so thing is that you can ask your family and friends you know or your customer for example if your customer comes to your place and you know you want uh, you know, nobody would take an effort to write the google review for you so the best thing what you can do is give them 10% 15% 20% discount if they actually write a review for you okay it can start with google it, they can give you you know they can give you stars they can also so give them 10 you know you'll give them 10% uh, discount if they give you stars give them 20% discount if they also write a comment actually for you on google the same thing that whichever platform you're focusing on it could be actually on facebook it could be also on you know your instagram as well so on instagram the organic uh, the marketing what would run about would be slightly different you make a post you put it out there and the people ideally go and make a comment at the below of the product or you know the post which you actually have done so to promote that ideally most of the businesses that's what they're doing they're giving discounts because that at least leads to someone going and writing a good review for you or at least some review for you yeah so that is i think the major in terms of your yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll add up to uh, what uh, mr gupta said uh, i'll give you a live example uh, near our college uh, there is uh, a small chart shop called balaji charts so my 13 year old daughter told me that your your college is in basavanagudi do you know balaji charts i was wondering uh, what is this balaji chart i have heard of uh, uh with the arti bhavan i have heard of uh, brahmin's cafe but where does this balaji charts come from and then she shows me an instagram post wherein an influencer is uh, promoting balaji charts it's a small shop one shop that's that was just selling charts for last 10 15 or maybe more than that i know them for last year 15 years or so they were very small in last one year or so the sales have gone up like crazy and they are uh, opening the shop from morning 8 o'clock till 12 in the night and there are so many people who have come and reviewed his shop and it's just a basic charge that they sell it's it's like cook without fire they don't even use anything and it has become so popular that my daughter or my family and people are uh, going to that particular shop or just inquiring from me or to through the social media to reach out to that particular place and that's the power of digital marketing today that person literally did not spend anything maybe he just got his friends to review on his shop and uh, today it's a big hit just, just to add to it it's just that it is something called as influencer marketing where ideally you know you uh, though it it you know at a surface level it might look like that you know, we're not paying anything to them but most of because i deal with this bloggers and bloggers day to day basis so they can charge you anything starting from 5000 rupee and going up to a lakh and a half 2 lakh rupees ideally on the basis of the number of followers what they have you know in terms of what he spoke about right uh, the followers would come and actually see the product and talk about what it is so for the same reason these people charge you on the basis of number of followers what they have set of engagement what the people get on each of the traction so that's called influencer management you actually can get influence you know you can get valid credibility for your business and these people's voice actually matters because the so they all actually category wise influencers for example there could be someone called lifestyle influencer there could be someone called food influ you know food blogger or food blogger so these people are only following you know the, the followers who are there are only following them for a specific reason so reach is also quite high it's it works out to be really well i think you know he spoke about a very fantastic strategy okay which is simple to look yeah uh, and doesn't cost much you know as per you know if you will be spending on a maybe a banner or something but yeah, it works out really well yeah another thing i was just thinking about uh, rather again coming back to some uh, research that i did i found that for uh, uh, smes one of the important ways of uh, marketing is use a tool like video 
right so uh, video because videos uh, industries are using to replace maybe uh, installation process to you know the, uh, many times if you, if you show a good video on assembly or how product is used you can save on installation and customer training it is also used for uh, uh, you know maybe getting customers uh, or uh, when you have an inquiry you can uh, send out a video which explains a lot of things so i think what i read was for small industries uh, videos are one of the best especially those who are into b2b right it's a very good medium to kind of uh, use uh, is uh, videos any other thing we, we have missed or we will kind of uh, throw it uh, open to the audience not miss not miss i think just what we spoke about so just keep a track of a platform called sora from open ai uh, it is coming up with brilliant videos actually you just need to know how to give a prompt proper prompt uh, and uh, many of you if you just uh, we all know that you know we all think that we know, know how to give prompt a simple formula to give prompt to chat gpt is the you know consider just chat gpt as a dumb kit who made it to the best degree but never studied at all so a simple way you need to give it you know think this chat gpt is a dumb kid and you have to give them instruction every time so give a context is about you know first of all what do you you know what is this entire scenario all about for example i want to make a digital marketing campaign okay so give it a context number one number two talk about yourself that you know i'm a business owner with about 15 years of experience living in bangalore india okay and dealing with this business you give this number prompt number two of this actually you give prompt number three you give a similar set of content which actually has been done in the past okay if you put these three prompts properly ideally the chances are very very high you will get very very specific uh, you know set of content what you're looking out for and if you do that i think uh, you can get the videos also for your business uh, right there you can just go and check it out it's called sora from open ai so it's context uh content and what are the yeah so, so you give about yourself you give a context what it is you give the activity which you want to do you talk about yourself and then you give a similar example like for example if you've seen a watched a content somewhere you can take a context from there you can leave it to it for understanding it if you do, do these four things it will give you the most optimum result possible yeah great yeah, yeah. so now what yeah. I, I have just unrelated the thing to state on the video and on the same thing if you were to vote the benefits of the internet to the society and i'll give you four or five choices and i want to know what you will vote for one now benefit meaning it should have helped the mankind to become better it should have bridged the gap between the let's say remote place and the urban places it should have helped the medically to training to everything so like last century it was the x ray which was voted as the best innovation for the mankind because x ray helped the mankind in a very many ways so similarly in your opinion what is the best thing that has happened because of the internet so options are let's say the video map that means you can go around in the city anywhere you can travel so that's one of the benefits Second benefit could be the YouTube. You can, you want to fix some problem, you go hunt on the YouTube, you get a way to this one. You want to learn something, you can get it. Likewise, email to a web, to whatever you can think of. And the last one is the AI. AI also, what benefit do we see for the mankind? Maybe the free tutor. I mean, I can imagine two years down the line, even a child in, the, let's say, Jharkhand somewhere, would get the similar education as the child getting in the best college and bank, best school in Bangalore because the AI tutor will be there. Health also you could get the same thing. So those are the kind of mankind benefits AI can give. But on the internet, what do you think is the benefit? When we are talking all about digital marketing is only the internet based marketing or the mobile based marketing. So would any anyone like to volunteer to state what he thinks or what she thinks? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody give him a mic, please. In the front. Front. That's what A understands sometimes as well. 
and there are agencies so, that do that. What about B2C, I am talking ah, B2C, there isn't anything like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 we will have a trust. Yeah. No. Uh -huh. Sir, I agree uh, with you. It's good to have some agency like that. But where I tried to kind of <laughs> interrupt what you're saying was because, I'll tell you, share my experience. I go to uh, play this website called TripAdvisor for looking at reviews of places, hotels, whatever, whatever. And like you said, lot of false reviews or, yes. you know, uh, in fact, there is one review they said, the hotel didn't even exist, but it had received uh, so many positive reviews and that fellow created just like that for fun. And then he had a party. He said, all of you come here to my hotel for the party. And when they went there, it was just some outside his house of lawn, so yes, there was yes. no hotel, nothing. So, uh, yeah, you can cheat people by giving false information, but in my experience, when I read, say, 10, 15, 20 reviews, I am able to make out. I don't know whether it's just but, an but, experience. Uh, the same solution, actually, which I was proposing as well, because the thing is that I uh, there are brands come to us to get reviews done. You know, I'm, I'm telling you openly right now, there are brands come to, to get reviews done, and then there are agencies also who write soft, when I say agency, I mean digital agencies actually, okay? Who go and write reviews on behalf of them by themselves or they also have bought in place which can write reviews for you. The only way you can understand, even by myself, so because you know I've been dealing, you know, I know the people write, you know, like bots reviews. So the only way you can identify actually is you read 10 to 20 reviews. If everybody's giving them five stars, right, throughout, 
and he was writing everything good. Trust me, there is no product in this world which actually you know can be five star and be the brilliant product. They will anybody and everybody would actually have bad reviews. You know the bad reviews is the only way by which I personally at least identify if those reviews actually are false or actually true. That's a way. That's a human way to do it right now. There's no human agency. intelligence. Huh? Yes, human yeah, intelligence. Yeah. Correct. No, not artificial intelligence. Human intelligence actually. Yes. Competitor may write a bad view. Oh yes, they do it every time. We have worked with so many but, brands. They write it. If it is written now, the review has been recommended by Manish Gupta and his agency. Mm -hmm. So probably, and if you do it ten times, and I go for ten. Different kind of products or services. Sir, so you have always been a scientist, or were you a teacher at any time? <laughs> no, no, I am asking this very. <laughs> no. Were you a teacher at any time? <laughs> no, I am a scientist. You are a scientist. Yes. No, I know that you are a scientist. I, I am asking whether any any time in the past, no. were you a why I ask that yeah. question is because there are a lot of students here also. Yes. See, it's very simple. I have spent 25 years in teaching. Okay. I spent first three four minutes only. I know what is the value of this answer. I don't need to read even the whole answer, right? Whether this was copied or it was taken from X source, Y source. Be just looking at it. Right? So same thing with reviews. The minute you read a review, you know. But like you said, if you have a more uh, what is a organized way of having a. Uh, yes, rating agency, that's good. But only question is that it should not create mistrust, rather it should create a trust. Those kind of reviews. But if it is on the other side, as more 70, 80 percent is mistrusting, so then you start mistrusting everything. But the yeah. first job of digital marketing yeah. itself, or any marketing activity itself, is to make things look presentable the most best possible way. The thing is that if it's not presentable itself in the first go, what is the whole point of being digital marketing? My friend was looking on magic bricks, you know, some house and. Colonies X and Y, you know, and then he says he's looking for a two-room, three-room, you know, flat or something. And the photograph is such, and when he goes, it is something in a shampoo. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so happens every time. No, no, most of them are, you know, putting like that. Yeah, yeah, correct. correct. That's what. Oh, yeah. That's what it. Really good, good, point. good points. Sir. Yeah, what good. happens is, if you, if somebody does like that. Uh, you might believe him once, you might believe him twice, but the world power of digital marketing is such that it will reach out to the majority of the customers because that person who is dissatisfied will also put down a review. So that review makes a lot of difference. It does, sir. For, uh, sir, many people first check on mouth shut, then only they will buy some product. But word of mouth will spread, you know, that yeah, yeah. it is not to be trusted. So is there any other uh, question? Uh, Regarding digital marketing, anybody else would like to ask? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. See, I am one of the missionary manufacturers based in Coimbatore. And uh, recently, I am mean, uh, planning to uh, export this machine and entering to the global market. As a first step, I am displaying a machine on Diesel Group, Germany, in May 28. So that is one of the fabulous exhibition, worldwide exhibition, and displaying machine. So before that, I would like to appoint a kind of agents or distributor for missions in different countries. At least if you are able to appoint at least 20 to 20 people in different you know, countries, if they are able to give at least one or two missions order, it will be enough for me. That's the first target I'm giving. So I would like to have a kind of your uh, tips or you know better suggestion how this can be achieved in two three months. Currently, I'm working on LinkedIn and you know, try to uh, people post or try to give a you know request uh, uh, searching this related to this printing industry. Uh, if I give 100, 200 requests, I'm just giving only few acceptance and uh, even that the discussion is not going further forward. So, so if I can give some tips, I'm going really help perform. What kind of machine will it be? It's a machine used for the printing and packaging industry. Printing and packaging. It is a kind of blanking machine, office shipping blanking machine, where you know once the paper is printed to separate the blanks. Okay. No, I don't know uh, specifically, uh, but generally for preparation for the exhibition itself. Okay. Okay. So, uh, have you gone on, uh, for example, things like Instagram or wherever that exhibition is uh, present? That means online, the exhibition itself will have some presence. It could be uh, on Instagram or LinkedIn or whatever. Yeah, so. It's one of the famous exhibition, like the printing industry, everyone knows that the exhibition is happening there. So no, no, what I'm saying is use your content along with that or as close to that as possible. Okay. One way before the exhibition, can you make some presence? Yeah, that's what we try. We are, you know, along with our logo and the yeah, exhibition. Yes, before us, actually, 
the other session, they discussed the same, very same thing. How you can identify uh, customers. Right? For example, you know, importers of uh, printing machinery. By country, you can get that list. You know, uh, or uh, agents for printing machinery in each country. You can get that list. And the World Trade Organization, they have one website. I think it's called Trade Maps. Okay. Trade Maps. So just go to Trade Maps. There you will get which countries are importing these machines, how much and from where they are importing, and also who are the top 10 importers. Okay. So the list of names you will get, but how do you connect with them? Yeah, like this, I, I tried to download the exhibitors in different exhibitions in the world. I really got around 5,500 list of contact. I used to send the mail. And hardly I'm not getting any response from them. I mean, it's going Sir, another thing I would suggest is just sending a mail is not good enough. Make one phone call option. Okay. So I'll have an additional you have a solution like your digital solution for you if you have, okay? The thing is that simply try to you know see your customer, who actually your customer is, and what do you believe, how would they start looking out for this product? Number one. Number two, what would be the category of those customers would be? Like, you know, for example, would they be, you know, users of this? Would they be consumer of this? That category-wise, you actually have to do it. If you know what sentences or what words they actually would be searching for, you actually can start running Google Ads specifically, or you can start running LinkedIn Ads. So if you're not getting response from LinkedIn, the reason could be your reach. When you say reach, your content might not be going to the right side of people, actually. Now, to ensure that LinkedIn actually has very specific you know, search, you know, or in fact, when you're putting your ad, you can do category-wise ads. You can you can put industry, you can put, you know, the, the experience of the person do you want, what is the designation of the person do you actually want it to be there. By putting all those filters, you can run ads on LinkedIn specifically. You can run ads on Google as well. You know, geo-targeting at that location itself where you want it to be sold. If that would be done, the chances are very, very high. You know, you might get about, per se, five to 10 leads out of that. Three to four would be convertible very easily if you interact with them actually. Thank you. So I think what you got out of this, I think, is at least spend a little bit on LinkedIn ad. Okay. Okay. Try a LinkedIn okay. ad. Yeah. You can you can YouTube about you know how to run uh, YouTube uh, you know sorry you can how to run LinkedIn ads. It will give you specifically how to uh, look. It's not the point is not to run random ad. The point is to segment the ad and be very specific. Whom do you want, or who you know, whom do you want the someone to look at your ads? Actually, the specific people is very clear. Or else you'll end up wasting thousands or lakhs of money on those ads, and you'll get nothing. I think you need to contact Mr. Namish. <laughs> you need a right digital marketing agency which will take care of you. You are a manufacturer, sir. You don't have to put your head head into so much. Appoint a consultant who will do all your job easy. What about a video? You have a video? Do you have video? My music video? Yeah. You have? Yes, sir. Where, where is it available online? Yeah, there's a lot of videos available on the YouTube itself. Yeah, we also used to post. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. I don't know whether we actually have some time. So, yeah, we will take one last question and then we'll kind of. Yes, sir. It's not a question because I just want to have some. Can I? I'll pass it. One more question. Hey, Mike, could I? He has got a question there. We'll take your question also. Hello. Uh, sir, on what you asked. I am going to tell you an experience about a footwear manufacturer. He took all his footwear, all designs, he took and he went to France for an exhibition. Oh, he went there, exhibited all the footwear that he has the best quality. He has, he, uh, near to him, there was a stall of a Chinese person which was having only one type, one model, some Hawaii model of a particular design. Only was, he was exhibiting that only. See, at the end of the show, he, that man got all the orders and he came back without any order. Note that his quality is bad. What happened is that before going there, he got the data information on what type of chapels they require, what is their design which is very popular and they made a design of those chapels and those quality chapels only he took there. So you have to be very specific on what type of product they will require so that all your product will go. So this is a learning which I, this was again done using data analytics and AI. But the design was done here. 
using this particular thing. Sir, one uh, regarding advertisement charges, you are mentioning uh, marketing expenses and adopting to AI for micro units is a big challenge. Yeah. No doubt about that. If uh, Amazon as a case side, anybody is there? So I have two suggestions. At least there should be a backbone given by the government initially where they, it can, they, these MSMEs can approach as a SaaS model or something, they can use that at least in the initial stages, pay as they use it. Once they grow, they can hive up and they can start their own. Such a support is required at least then. Second is that, second request, I don't know whether it is possible. See, if you go and talk to a micro unit, if you talk to them, he is totally worried. I have, I have been talking to them, worried whether how to give today's salary and how to get back the money he has already given. So he is not worried about these things. So what I, we, what I said, he also wants to do this. Uh, ultimately, he wants to know what is his bottom line that day. What, if possible, if the government can create a corpus of CSR fund exclusively for uh, uh, modernizing micro units. Maybe that fund should be early earmarked for that. Some agency, let them identify which are the sectors which need the support. If it is steel or footwear or anything, let them try to identify some units. Try to give this fund, a uh, required fund, when they grow, you always have the privilege of taking it back. Some kind of structure, something should be there. Unless we always talk about MSMEs, their problems, it will always remain a problem unless you find some such solutions. Good, good suggestions. Definitely we should talk to Kasia. And like I said, already we discussed about OMDR is there and today there is another thing coming up for e-commerce, global e-commerce from India. Government is putting up one portal, then OMDR is also there. So from their side some effort is happening. But may not be specific to this morning. Yes sir, we will take the last question. Gentlemen in the back, yes please. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a question with Namish. Uh, we were discussing about the digital marketing, but as we understand digital marketing, and I've been into startup for the last 12 years, and what I've understood is that currently the business is moving out of the performance marketing segment. Uh, people are trying to make sure that there is a recall value to their product. So I would like to understand what should be an approx spend for an MSME on a percentage basis on their side of marketing because the gross margins are pretty skewed for them. So they won't have a huge uh, capital to invest on the side of marketing or do the performance marketing. That's the first thing. If you can help us understand what would be the right percentage that they should spend on the marketing, that's the first question. And just a related part to it, uh, how uh, can we educate them more on the side of content marketing than on the side of uh, performance marketing. So what would be your take on this? And the second question, the whole panel can give me a point, point of views. Yeah, so are you a firm that is focusing on the top line and some uh, exiting of uh, investors or are you focusing on something else? Uh, basically what uh, experience I had over the last decade is that uh, initially every organization start with digital marketing and do a performance marketing. In a startup language, Namish will agree, we call it steroids. That has been put in to increase the, uh, increase the sales. And what we have realized, once you stop that marketing, the sales basically collapse. Correct. So there is actually no sales. It's just the marketing, the or it's just the performance marketing, which is giving you an illusion of yes, sales. Yes, yes. So how can a MSME with a very skewed margin not get trapped into right. this because a lot of startup in India have lost because of this performance marketing and they didn't understand that this is a delusion. You want to answer then I'll answer. Yeah, sure. The thing is that uh, a paradigm shift actually from, uh, you, can, yeah, you can pass the mic to Yeah. The thing is that a paradigm shift from uh, running performance marketing, moving to SEO marketing is very, very important because the thing is that I tell to most of my clients that if you keep spending money on your ads and never focus actually on your SEO, you would spend your lifetime, your kids also would spend actually and the next generation also would be keep spending on ads. It's a never ending job. The thing is that if you can parallelly work, so I always give a target usually to the brands who actually work with me that for one first one year because you know you don't have a much of presence, much of reach or for example your SEO is not ranked well because ideally it takes about one year's time to you know, get SEO. It's good to run ads until for one year. 
But the thing is that if you don't start, you know, reducing your ad spend and spending more on SEO, it's actually going to cost you a lot because the thing is that for SEO, you're not paying for per, you know, you're not paying for per customer. You are actually paying for the entire, just one SEO activity, and the entire set of, you know, you are, you are calling so many of, you know, your your customers actually onto it by spending. Only on the spend, for example, an SEO would cost you about, you know, an addition NC would cost you about seventy-five thousand to about a lakh. You know, it it will keep spending you. Now, if you're spending about uh, this same one lakh rupee on ad for throughout the you know lifetime, actually, and in fact, your ad spend would keep increasing on because the thing is that the bidding would be keep going on every now and then. You know, because your keyword actually, so thing is that if you're using this keyword, you'll have also a competition in the same keyword. Now, they start bidding for it more widely. It keeps getting getting higher and higher. So, my one simple recommendation is start. You know, uh, start moving to SEO in terms of getting a be better SEO, okay? And uh, then eventually, as you feel, you know, you're getting sufficient traction from that. That traction actually has to be concluded in terms of your organic, you know, the paid, uh, the paid, unpaid. the unpaid marketing which we spoke about, right? The organic is what we say. Yeah, I, I, I'm doing this work today. Yeah, so you know, in, in terms of unpaid marketing, okay? The thing is, that you need to actually get it on your. Your customer should be able to write with you on your Instagram post. The thing is that when, when anyone write a po you are putting a post, right? If you are able to see po people putting at least some kind of post, then that actually becomes a rotating market actually. And the market recall value can only happen if you are packaging. Now again, I'm moving from digital marketing to something else. The thing is that, but it will really matter. I don't know what set of business you are into. If you are actually into, you know, uh, FMCG good or there is actually some a physical product is there. The kind of packaging what you do, if that can actually have a recall value, the chances are much much higher that the customer will come back to you and you don't actually have to be in the strap of ad spend forever. Else? Yes, and the second part of the question was to uh, basically what would be your advice for a MSME? What should be their focus? As you said, the first year should be on the performance marketing, and how should they gradually get into a content? Because Instagram would be more content and engagement led marketing. Correct. That's different from. Uh, you can say a normal, uh, you know, performance marketing. So, how that transition of MSME should do, and what should be the timeline? If I am starting a company today, uh, should I take a target of getting into content marketing by the second year or the third year of my business, or should I start doing it from the first year? The thing is that uh, first of all, if your uh, digital hygiene are clear, you can begin from from the six month also actually. But please take first six months of your time in terms of. Clearing out all your digital hygiene, you know, for example, your uh, all your handles, you know, should be functioning fine, should be reachable. You know, your handle should actually at least have a blue tick mark everywhere. For example, uh, Twitter is a you know is a screwed up platform right now for various reasons actually. But uh, at least of your LinkedIn and at least of your Instagram, I would not uh, recommend Facebook until unless your target audience actually is between 40 to 60. Okay, so if your target audience actually is younger, younger please focus on LinkedIn and uh, you know your Instagram. If you're able to do that, that number one. In terms of if you are Google business, which I spoke about actually, if that is in place, okay, and if uh, you know your other uh, SEO actually is in place, it should be perfectly fine in terms of moving to content marketing from six month onwards. Actually, should be a good enough time to start with. And I think you had a one more question in terms of what should be ideally a budget for an MSME percentage budget because generally if you take as hundred percent, maybe hundred rupees as their sales. Yes. What should be the Cost of acquisition that client and that most of the comp I would not specifically uh, my experience is not specifically to MSME actually but I would say in general I think brands spe especially spend about five percent of the year. No, no, actually, see, it's, it's, it's a function of the industry, you know, in the category of products, right? So it's not uh, that easy to kind of just give roll out a number like that. Because, it's a number to be honest. Yeah, it's not possible at all because it's a function of the industry. But what we should definitely do is. What is the industry spend? We should know what is this product category is being uh, spent. Uh, you know, we can get that kind of data. That will help us to identify or look at what. Uh, so definitely, if you are doing uh, something in B two B, it will be lesser than if you have to reach. And also, where physical location of the market, where is your market? So a lot of things have to be considered to arrive at a budget, right? So uh, thank you all uh, for being. Uh, such a wonderful audience. Uh, thanks to uh, Namish, uh, Maheshri, and Pankaj for uh, enlightening us on uh, very interesting aspects of digital marketing. Uh, thank you all. We'll close it uh, uh, here.
Thank you, team. Uh, we got enough insights and, most importantly, several hacks for various tools and uh, creative ideas. Uh, do you guys agree with me? Yes. Yes. Uh, with that, I'd like to invite Dr. Juneja again to please come on to the dais in order to felicitate the dignitaries of the dais. Also, I'd like to invite Mr. Praveen Arora to please join us on stage to felicitate the dignitaries on the dais. Requesting Dr. Juneja to present a token of appreciation to Dr. G.P. Sudhakar. Can we hear a huge round of applause? Requesting Dr. Juneja again to hand over the token of appreciation to Mr. Namish Gupta. Requesting Mr. Praveen Arora to hand over the token of appreciation to Pankaj Chaudhary. Requesting Mr. Praveen Arora again to present a token of appreciation to Mr. Mahesh Kumar Jain. Huge round of applause, everybody. With that, we come to the conclusion of day one. Dr. Ganesh to please join us for a group picture. Mr. Amit Patnagar to again join us on the dais for a group picture. Mr. Srinivasan. Mr. Rajan. Thank you. Is this an answer? Is Requesting Vice President Kazia, Mr. Raj Gopal, to please come on to the dais.